I'm Brianna. And I'm Akira. And you're watching Dante's, Dante's Boxing Nation. I don't know what this world is coming to! Check this out, this is the flame And if you want the whole truth, nothing but the whole truth So help the whole truth And hey, you better listen to my day, baby My day What's going on guys and welcome to another great edition of the Dante's Boxing Nation show. I am your host Dante and we have another great show for you guys as always. Man, a whole lot of boxing to talk about. But you know, first things first, I want to thank you guys for always tuning in. Everybody for supporting, for all of you guys that have been donating to Dante's Boxing Nation, Boxing Ego and all of us. We all appreciate it guys. Thanks for the love and thanks for buying them shirts. Go to nationboxing.com man and pick up your shirts, alright? We got them in all different sizes, and we also have the hats, because a lot of you guys have been asking about the hats as well. So let me go ahead and introduce the panel, and let's get this cracking, man. First things first, the man in the studio on the ones and twos. George, what's going on, man? Trying to make it better for all of us. There we go, baby. There we go. And we got my man, Boxing Ego. Check out his website, guys. He has one of the fastest rising websites. It's BoxingEgo.com. I'm talking about for all your boxing news. Check it out. We got my man, AK, Arab King. Check out his boxing channel on YouTube, Always Spitting the Truth. And in the studio, man, I got my co-host and special guest in the studio, repping the boxing boys, my man, Sean. What's going on, Sean? How you doing? Thank you for having me. All day, man. Not a problem, man. Glad you came by, man. Thank you. So let's go ahead and talk about some boxing, guys. Um, you know, I'll start with you, uh, Sean, since um, you're in the studio with me, man. We had a real good weekend. Me and you, we, we covered this fight exclusively at the MGM Grand, uh, the Manny Pacquiao fight. But, you know, before we get into the Pacquiao fight, let's talk briefly about the Anthony Joshua fight. Did that fight play out the way you thought it would? Yeah. Yeah, he did what he was supposed to do. Um, but still, that's him taking out a guy, um, even though he got it, the vacant title or whatever. Still a title holder, 23-0. and 0, And he took him out in two rounds with ease. Uh, he, Joshua now is a part of um, what's not just... Before we would go, oh, it's getting kind of good for the heavyweights because they've been so bad the last pl decade plus. Mm -hmm. It's not just good for the heavyweights. Heavyweight is one of the hottest divisions in boxing now. No doubt about it. You know, not just in comparison, us cutting it some slack. Mm -hmm. um, so now he's a part of this Fab Four we got all of a sudden with Luis Ortiz, Tyson Fury, uh, Deontay Wilder, and of course himself, Anthony Joshua. Yeah. Um, so out of those four right now, it's kind of like, who's your guy until we get to see them fight each other? Yeah. And, and who, who are you the most impressed with out of the four, man? Or if you could put it in order. And then I'll tell you my order. <laughs> People are going to think I'm crazy, but I might actually put Ortiz last. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Um. It's close. Uh, I think you got – this sounds crazy, but I think you got to put Fury number one just for right now because he's so tall, and he and he kind of beat Klitschko not fighting that good. Mm -hmm. Like I think he could fight better than that if yeah. push come to shove, a guy makes him raise his game, maybe Klitschko in the rematch. I'm going to leave him at number one just because he's the champ. Okay. And then at two, I got to put Joshua, and at three, Wilder, although – that's how good it is right now. I might pick Wilder to beat Fury head to head. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, it, let's just see it. Let's just see those four in with each other, mix and match. Yeah. Ego, you agree with that? What do you think? No, I mean my list would be different, but I mean it depends on what we're talking about. I mean you got to respect Tyson Fury. He took a long-standing dominant champion by Klitschko. So I mean, it, I mean you can't really argue if someone wants to put him up there just because he has most the most belts in the division and yeah. he beat. Probably the most respectable was a big person win. who hadn't yeah. lost in like a decade. Yeah, no so, doubt. I mean, that's fair. But yeah, my, my, in my terms list. of like breaking down the fights, if they were all to fight each other, I don't think Tyson Fury would, if they did like a Super 6 tournament, mm -hmm. I don't think he would win versus all those other guys you named. You know what I mean? In terms of the the the, the, the actual fight, how it would play out. So, he, you know what I mean? You have to give him the respect now. But if they did a Super 6, I don't think Tyson Fury would emerge like Andre Ward did. Yeah. And he is super six. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Go, go ahead, AK. You was about to say something. Yeah, I said I was going to say my list is like way different. Um, you know, of course, Fury did be Chris Cole, but I think because of the lack of power that he has, yeah, he's a big guy, but he's not really a knockout artist like these other guys. So my list will be Joshua first, uh, Ortiz second, Wilder third, and Fury last. 
Yeah, you know, um, I, I would agree, obviously, with, with Sean when it comes to, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Tyson Fury being the most accomplished, has, having the best win, no doubt about it. You know, I mean, that, he beat the base, he basically beat the king. He beat the, the king of the division and everything. But, yeah, when it comes to who's the best and who I believe has the potential to go the furthest, um, yeah, I would have to agree with you, AK. Um, I would have to. You know, I think it's out of me. I think it's out of Joshua or Ortiz. You know, when I when I think of those two fighters fighting against each other, it reminds me of the Olympics, man. It reminds me of the the gold medal match. You know, the Cuban versus you know the Brit or whatever. You know, so that man, I, I just can't wait, man. I can't wait to see all these guys fight against each other, and I still want to see Andy Ruiz get in that mix, man. I still want to see him get. Uh, you know, I heard I heard he turned down um, uh, the uh, Luis Ortiz fight. You know, so, but hopefully, you know, he gets in the mix. You I know, know what? Call me, you, could, you guys could call me crazy, but I would actually, I would pick Wilder to beat Joshua now. Yeah. But the thing is, Joshua is young, mm -hmm. so the more he fights, the more dangerous he, he will become, as long as he keeps winning, of course. And then that's when it would change. But based on pro-level experience, I interviewed uh, Eddie Hearn last year, and he almost said the same thing. He said a lot of people think, Anthony Joshua can beat Deontay Wilder right now, but the time isn't right. He's still learning. This was obviously before he got the title shot, but he said the time is not right. He's still learning, and basically wouldn't be fair to just throw him in there. But if Wilder gets past Povetkin, then it won't be long before Joshua becomes his mandatory. So as, as Joshua keeps fighting and developing, then I think that gap would, would, would uh, definitely get smaller. But right now, if they were to fight, like right now, I think Wilder, based on yeah, more and see, low level championship well, experience. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, as far as to be honest with you, Ego, like, well, once you become a champion, you should fight in, anybody. You know what I'm saying? Because you should you, you should be willing to fight everybody. But if Joshua fight Wilder at this point, to me, I think um, Joshua will win because I think Wilder makes a lot of errors and he don't get paid for them because he's fighting shorter fighters. But as we've seen. In uh, Joshua's last fight, he was fighting a guy as big as him, and he he kind of, you know, a lot of people, you know, he think that he'd be dropping his hand, that he's going to get uh, countered and hurt like he did in his last fight, but he upped his game. And I think if he fight Wilder, he will do the same. And he will, he will uh, a fight like that is the, the guy who's going to win is the guy who's going to make less errors. And I think, no, I, I mean, I feel you, but that I was just going to say that Wilder is six foot seven with a crazy right hand. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, Charles Martin, True. he was kind of yeah. unproven. Good like, I'm not too. taking away from Joshua's win, but we didn't know what Charles, I don't even know what his power is like. Because I was, I mean, to be honest, he fought for a vacant title against Glasgow. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he was winning, clearly winning, but it ended in a freak accident type yeah. of way. I, so, again, I give Joshua credit for beating him. He was still a champion, but it was a vacant, and it ended in a, in a weird, freakish type of way. It wasn't like a traditional ending. And, again, Joshua... He's fought guys that are his height or maybe a little bit smaller. Going up against someone who's athletic at six seven with equal power or just around the same power, I think it's a different ball game. But Wilder does make mistakes. I think Joshua's more technically sound. To me, it's a fifty fifty fight. Oh yeah. But I just think with the pro level experience, um, it's a dangerous one immediately for Joshua. And yeah, I, that's true. But I was just I was just basing that off Wilder. You know. After he jabbed, he kind of dropped his hand low and, and stuff like that. That's what I was basing that on. And, and, and this is, and this yeah, is the reason. Because, I mean, Wilder's pretty, he can get pretty aggressive. Like, if you look at the Johan Duhapas, he wants to insert, like, assert his power early. You know what I'm saying? And I don't remember the last person Joshua fought that I would say rates, their power rates like Wilder's power. Or and even the frame, like the frame and the power that Wilder has. So, I'm not just overly saying, we'll see what Wilder does versus Povetkin. Because that's a, I mean, that's a tough fight. In itself. Mm hmm. And this is the reason why the heavyweight so, division it, is stacked. This popping. is why. It, what's up? I said it's popping. Yeah, yeah. And, and why. Yeah, I, I can't wait. But, um. And, and by the way, I would. I just want to say Joshua definitely is the guy for the future. I was talking about, like, at this very moment. But in the next coming years, he's definitely that guy, I think, that's going to carry the, the titles and the division. Yeah, but yeah, we, it, like I said, we'll still see, I don't though. I you guys noticed, but it did 20,000 sold out 20,000 yeah. seats. Yeah. And That's sold ridiculous. out and sold out in 90 seconds. Yeah. And, and Paulie said that um they just flat out support their fighters more. Oh game. yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it because we all know uh I mean just imagine 
how much more excited people will be about boxing if the fans, you know, did support, you know, the American champions the way they do out there in the UK. So, but let's go ahead. And Dante, I'm just going to say this about the American fans. Look at the accomplished guy like Floyd Mayweather. For 19 years, he showed you what he's capable of beating all these champions. We're still learning as Joshua develops, and they all all came out to support him. Yeah, and you know, I mean, that was his first world title. We didn't even know what he was capable of. Yeah, he still came out to support. But there's champions who are proven that are American that get that Rodney Dangerfield no respect. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, no yeah, even even his last fight with Whiteman, I think he's uh, his pay per view over there in the UK. I think that his last fight, with the Whiteman fight, and he did call, it was like 400 to 500 pay per views. If I'm, if uh, I'm not too sure about that, but I think that's the numbers that I heard. Which yeah. that's great oh, yeah. for a prospect. You know what I'm saying? Those are what you call real boxing fans. Those are what you call real boxing yeah. fans that are not basing things more on emotion and you know and and more on ration. Mm -hmm. You know, those are boxing fans that really love the sweet science, and we need more of that over here. We need fans that love the sport. Period. You know, and they don't have this. Go ahead. Hey, I was just going to say this real quick about the reference. You know the Scott Quick fight where Frampton? It yeah. started off kind of slow. It was like a, they were measuring each other out. I didn't hear one boo. I didn't mm -hmm. hear one single boo. But if you listen to like Ruslan Provodnikov versus Timothy Bradley, when the guys got tired and had like a slower round, people were booing. Yeah. People were booing at Keith Thurman versus Robert Guerrero yeah. after he knocked down uh, Guerrero. Yep. Just disrespectful. You know, yeah. What are you booing for? They're giving everything. Man, I, I'll never forget, you know, the the look that uh, Keith Thurman had on his face at the weigh-in. Because that was the first time that he just got on the scale and got booed like crazy. And he had this look on his face, like, looking around like, what the hell is going on here? He had never felt that before. You know, so it, it, it just goes to show you. We, we got a ways to go, man. We, we got a ways to go. But uh, let, let's go ahead and, and jump into this Manny Pacquiao situation. Congratulations to Manny Pacquiao. He wins the trilogy. And, um, you know, now he can take credit for all three fights. You know, no doubt about it. I said it before the fight. I said whoever wins this fight, they take credit for all three fights. It's just like the NBA Finals, you know. The best of seven, the best of three, or, you know, and all that, you know. So, you know, I thought that uh, Manny Pacquiao, I would, I would have to agree with everyone when people say that Manny Pacquiao, he looked the best that he's looked in years. And that's saying a lot because Tim Bradley, he stepped his game up. I personally think that uh, Team Bradley and Teddy Atlas, they made the mistake of focusing so much on trying to fight on the outside because Tim Bradley is a good inside fighter. And I'm not saying he should have, you know, stayed on the inside, you know, the whole night. But, you know, he should have mixed it up more. You know, so he tried, he sat there waiting, but he waited too long. And he, and you know, and basically, while he was waiting, Manny Pacquiao was building up more confidence to let his hands go. Because Pacquiao, he wasn't really throwing a lot of punches. Right, uh, no, Sean? No, no, no. Uh, remember, they threw half as many punches in this third fight than they did in their first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what, I mean, so what did you think about how, how did you assess Manny Pacquiao's performance overall? I thought he looked great, you know, especially for 37 years old. Um, me and you, uh, we always um, kind of uh, disagree on this. I, <laughs> I, I think there's a hundred percent peak, the best the guy ever looked. Um, Floyd against Gotti. Um, Floyd's different because he looked his absolute best he ever looked too against Canelo when he was 36, but he's Floyd. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Hopkins too looked his very best at 36 when he fought Trinidad. Some guys their very best, like Tyson, was 21, mm -hmm. and, and they don't even look the same when they're 29. So I thought we got as good a Pacquiao as we've ever gotten in the last couple years. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Including, um, uh, actually, uh, along with the Mayweather fight, because I'm I I thought he looked pretty damn good in the Mayweather fight. Yeah, I did too. And, yeah, I did too. I really did in terms of speed and uh, reflexes. And then when he hurt Floyd, he was able to throw a 20 punch combination and like. Three, five seconds. I thought he looked good. Mm -hmm. um, so I still, he still looked like top five pound for pound Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. If, if not, if not the guy that beat Cotto and laid out Hatton with one punch. If that's a hundred percent, he was like eighty five percent, ninety percent. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion. No, but 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 I agree with that, Sean. I mean, yeah, I'm not saying that 
he's like his top top peak, okay, like going yeah. all the way back to when he knocked out the African cat. You know what was the African dude's name? Uh, Le- 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 La Baba. That's yeah. what it was. I was calling him Matt yeah. the earlier. <laughs> La Baba. That's what it was. But uh, yeah, he looked he looked real good. You know in this performance, and yeah, I mean even with Floyd Mayweather, you know, yeah, he looked great against Canelo, yeah. but he looked even better against Corrales and and Gaddy. Right. You know, right. I mean the 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 basic instincts and and just the reflexes was ridiculous. You yeah. know. So yeah, man. I mean, I, I would like to see Manny Pacquiao, you know, continue to fight, you know. But uh, yet at the same time, and this is where we have to tackle um, now. AK, I start with you on this one. Now the whole thing is, you know, here comes the double standards. Of course, we congratulate Manny Pacquiao, but it's unfortunate that when Floyd Mayweather fights against Manny Pacquiao, which just like Sean said. Pacquiao looked good. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather looked good. Yeah. You know, it was a chess match, and you know you can't make any mistakes. We're talking about the fight of the decade. You, you don't. You're not supposed to make mistakes and do something reckless, right? So the whole thing, though, is when Floyd beats him, um, AK. They say that Manny Pacquiao, or some people, they say that Manny Pacquiao, he was washed up, and Floyd waited for him to, you know, um, you know, reach his prime or whatever, or, or he was he was past his prime, past his peak, and everything. Uh, what, what do you think about that, AK? Well, too bad because before that he fought Algeri, and he looked his best almost. He knocked, he knocked down Algeri. <laughs> and we just talked. Who do I talk about? Now, yeah, yeah. We just talk about. Go ahead, AK. Yeah, yeah. He he looked his best versus Algeri, or you know that was one of his best performances in, yeah. couple, in like a couple years. Absolutely. And then he fought Bradley for the third time after Bradley came off a big win versus Rios, and he won that fight and knocked down Bradley twice. So you can't tell me that. You know, he was too old in between. <laughs> Does that even make any sense? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And you, can, so you definitely can't, can't go, you can't go like a rubber band, you know, old and young and old and young. You know, it doesn't work yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, so, so the only thing that went wrong is that he got beat that night. So they try to use that excuse. Mm-hmm. You know, let's not forget, Floyd Miller is the older fighter of the two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Miller was the one who was trying to fight him in, you know, in 2010, and Manny Pacquiao is the one who turned down the fight. So you can't even say, oh, if they fought in 2010, Pacquiao would have won. Because Pacquiao didn't even want to fight back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So that, that throws that out of the window. But I, I just want to say one thing, though, as far as Bradley's performance, he was reacting too much. I know he was trying to do the Marcus uh, right counter, but he was either reacting too early or too late. I, I, know, I know it's because of Pacquiao's speed, but I felt like that he, was, uh, he wasn't as relaxed as he was in the first fight, even, even the first fight. You know, he was relaxed in the first fight more than he was relaxed in the third fight. However, though, um, when when he did try to get uh, when he did try to jump on Pacquiao after that first knockdown, and he scored his best shots of the ninth and the eighth, that it was him opening up that also kind of led to that other knockdown in the ninth. But I get what you mean. It, he was waiting on Pacquiao yeah. all night fighting defensive. Yeah, there. but when yeah, he got yeah, caught, yeah. when he got caught in the second knockdown, he was sitting. He was standing there waiting though, and got caught with a perfect yeah, yeah, straight left. Yeah, that particular moment, he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. He wasn't yeah. going after him when he got caught. Yeah. Right. I mean, my my thing is. If you watch Bradley versus Marquez, you could clearly see that Bradley was studying the Mayweather fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, he, he was he was doing, he was emulating a lot of Mayweather moves in that fight. I think he tried to do the same thing in this fight. I think so. But one of the one of the biggest mistakes is he did not implement the check hook when backing up to the ropes. Floyd Mayweather, he was dominating Manny Pacquiao the whole night with that check hook. He would back up a little bit, and then just like a, a bull to a matador, Floyd Mayweather, he threw the check hook, he pivoted to the left, and it, it was reminiscent of Ricky Hatton, you know, getting knocked out. That, which, actually, I'm surprised it, Pacquiao it, didn't get knocked out in that fight because he got caught with a lot of them check hooks the same way Hatton did. Floyd Floyd was kind of happy to just do enough to get the win. Uh, but I, I agree. I th- that's why I hit Floyd Sr. was so upset with him in between rounds because it was like, put it on him because the yeah. openings were there. Yeah. And about him landing the check left hooks, Maybe only Floyd's the guy who's got the athleticism to keep his feet in position to when Matt Manny moves. He's the only guy who could be in position right there with him to land the check hook. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe. And, and, and I, I mean, and you know, I, I talked to Floyd Sr. and I asked him, I was like, why do you think, you know, Floyd Mayweather didn't do, 
you know, the, the extra stuff you wanted them to do. And he said something that I thought myself, which, because my, my, my son boxes too, and I tell him sometimes sometime you see things in there that I don't see, you know, so if you feel more comfortable, you know, you, you don't want driving at the end of the day. Right. You know, I could just, right. you know, give you um, instructions. And that's kind of the answer that Floyd Sr. gave me. Well, oh, yeah? He, he, yeah, he said that to me. He said, well, maybe it's because he's seen something and sometimes it looks different from the outside. Because I know... Floyd Mayweather, he wanted to, I know he wanted to walk uh, Pacquiao down. I know that was the strategy at first. He did and, and for that, a good portion of the fight. And it was one round where I remember Floyd, he tried to come in, you know, with the high guard. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he threw the high, high guard up, Pacquiao, you know, took off on him with like a four-punch combination. And then Floyd went back to boxing, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. it's like he didn't give, you know, um, Floyd Mayweather the opportunity to just come in. Because usually when you charge after Pacquiao, he goes in the high guard, that awkward high guard, and leaves himself open, you know. But, um, yeah, you, but you, like you said, with, with Floyd Mayweather, he has plan A, B, C, you know. And it's all so, about getting the victory. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nothing else. And, 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 but, that, but that's for everybody, though, because oh, yeah. that's why it, it, the same thing applies with Pacquiao. If, if he would have won that fight... It would have looked like he was doing just enough to win because he had Floyd on the ropes. And when he had Floyd on the ropes, he would back up. Well, no, with Pacquiao this past weekend, he had opportunities to follow up on his second knockdown and get a KO. But mm -hmm. yeah. he there, you had to respect the guy in front of him and, and take what was there to just get the win. And because the take, win, you, yeah. Yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah because you say that extra stuff. For fighters, that's on the lesser, you know. When you need uh, it, when yeah. you gotta do it. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, or uh, yeah, when you need to do it, or when there's no risk there, right? Like, well, yeah. yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, it's like any sport, you know. If um, you know, and I don't even watch a whole lot of football, but if you know, if no one is is is, is blocking the receivers, you see receivers wide open, you know, you are gonna keep throwing hail marys. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if they got a good ass, you know, a cornerback or whatever, yeah, safeties, DNs, yes, yeah, all that kind of yeah. stuff. You know, like I said, I don't watch too much football, but right. you, you, Sean know what I'm talking about. Yes. But you know, you're gonna keep throwing hail marys, you know, and that, and that's the bottom point, the bottom line. You know, so if you have an opponent that's easy to hit, you're gonna throw four, five, six punch combinations. That's why Pacquiao, was, you know, he'll be more reckless against a Margarito, you know, or someone like that. And Floyd, you know, he'll be more reckless against a, a Chavez or, you know, a fighter who's easy to hit, you know. That's just, that's, yeah. A Maidana. Yeah. Like in the first fight. It, yeah. We opened up all night. Styles make fights. Right. Styles make fights. So I, I know we done, we done rambled off a whole lot. We got to make sure we talk about Errol Spence before we run out of time because that fight is this weekend. But, um, but um, E, man, um, let me go ahead and ask you, man, about Max Kellerman's um, thoughts, and then we'll talk briefly about the ESPN um, Top 25. Matter of fact, check out um, Boxing Ego's um, video. He does a great breakdown on this um, Top 25 ESPN. So y'all could go to um, Boxing Ego's um, channel for that. But Ego, what do you think about Max Kellerman basically saying that because uh, Manny Pacquiao, he moved up in more weight classes, you know, that makes him the greater fighter of this era over the guy that he lost to, uh, Floyd Mayweather? How does that make sense? E. Oh, did we lose E? Uh, AK, you there? Okay, we, we lost everybody. So, Sean, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead, Sean. So, so your, your reaction, man. I'm going to preface this by saying I have Floyd slightly ahead of Manny Pacquiao. Two, okay. of the, two of the top ten best fighters of all time. I'm sure there's guys from the 50s who would say, you know, you, you're skipping a few guys. But, hey, I'm doing that's the best I could do. Yeah, people are going to lean towards their generation, right. no, no doubt about it. Right. Yeah. But, uh, so, so, yeah, I, I have Floyd ahead of Manny. That being said, I thought Max gave a, 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 a very rational breakdown of why he felt the way he did. I don't um, necessarily agree with him, but he used the perfect example, Roberto Duran. Uh, Duran got KO'd in two by Hearns. He lost to Ray two out of three. But there's still a good amount of people. I, I put Ray ahead of Duran. But there's still a good amount of people who put Duran ahead of those guys. Hagler, all, all three guys he lost to. And he still, a lot of people put him ahead. And it's because of the reason uh, Max said, you know, he started from a lower weight class and was able to have similar success at the same weight class those guys were. Um, and, of course, uh, I think people are a little biased to Duran and Pacquiao because people love exciting fighters. Yeah. But um, Or they just love them, <laughs> you know, right, right, in, in yeah, general, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah. People have their favorite fighters. Hey, uh, E, AK, you guys are back, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, did you, did you get to hear what, um, what uh, Sean just said right now? You didn't hear the whole thing. 
Okay, he, 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 just just reiterate just a little bit so they can hear what you said, um, Sean. While I don't uh, uh, have the same conclusion as Max that I put Pacquiao ahead of Floyd, I have it the other way around. I, uh, I do agree that he makes a good point, and there's good logic and rationale there because he used the perfect example. Uh, a lot of Even though Durant lost to all three guys, Hearns, Leonard, and Hagler, uh, just about everybody has him ahead of Hearns and Hagler, and a lot of people have him ahead of Leonard, although I don't. Um, so I thought I thought while I don't agree with Max, um, he has his play. It, he he made sense. I, I hear what he's saying, and I, I enjoyed hearing it as a opposite viewpoint. So so well, I, go ahead, go ahead, okay, go ahead. Yeah, man, but I, I honestly disagree with that all the way. That's like Zab Judah is, is saying like that Zab Judah is better than Andre Ward because Zab Judah moved up more, more weight classes because Zab Judah fought everybody. He lost to Floyd, Amir Khan. And, you know, all these other fights, he got the same resume almost as Floyd. It's just he lost all his big fights, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So Ryan, in this, and, uh, and the other hand, he got knocked out of Hearns, by Hearns. He got knocked, uh, he, he, he lost to Hagler. He lost to Leonard twice. On the other hand, Leonard won all these big fights. He knocked out the man who knocked out the Ryan, which yeah. is Hearns. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So how, can, how, can you I, say, though, how can you say that Doran is better than Leonard? That's ridiculous. I gotta say that, that that's yeah, kind of ridiculous. I, 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 I'm on the situation is AK. If Max is in New York, I'm in California or Bucharest with my viewpoints because it's totally different. <laughs> because I don't think you could look at Roy Jones Jr. Roy Jones fought at middleweight and moved all the way up to heavyweight. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he's better than Muhammad Ali or any other heavyweight. That yeah. like, you know what I mean, Rocky yeah. Marciano. When he had one fight there, you yeah. know what I mean? A guy that's, yeah. who's been knocked out and things like that. Pacquiao's been knocked out in lower weight classes. Oh, you got to play so ahead of Marciano. Is, is, yeah, yeah, no, no doubt about it. But I, well, I mean, yeah, that's one. But you don't play him above Muhammad Ali and, and everybody because he has one fight at heavyweight and he moved up all it, the way to heavyweight. Because Pacquiao, yeah. too, if told, it's his eighth division, he only has one fight in the eighth division, and that was against Margarito at a catchweight. Well, if we're talking and, uh, uh, pound, for pound, and my, pound for pound, if we're talking, yeah. you know, Roy as a heavyweight, then he doesn't pound. make the top okay, ten. Okay, so Max, Max, Max said he got he he started lower yeah. and he got knocked out at light flyweight. But but knocked out all right. these Hall of Famers on the way up, and I and I love Zab and everything, but he he didn't. I know, but how his you resume get, isn't so close to Duran and Pacquiao. Well, I'm, but I, I think that although I get okay. your point, I get your point. But, but I, yeah, the, the, I think the point is it's easier. Anybody can go in there and lose to somebody. You know what I mean? Anybody can go in there and lose to great fighters. And the thing is, you have people pundits that are praising du, um, Duran. For actually getting in the ring and losing to guys, you know what I mean. Right. If you lose to everyone, you know that was relevant, you know, in your generation, how are you better than them? Well, you know he, what I mean. Well, he had great wins like beating Dante. Barkley right after Barkley no, knocked but, out Hearns. I know, but they have, but but it's it's different to have him rated over Barkley, but they have him rated over the guys he actually lost to. But, but that, for example, is having him rated over Hearns. Because mm -hmm. remember, I, I got Leonard ahead of Duran, no question. But yeah. but again, uh, uh, Hearns gets knocked out by Barkley twice. Hearns knocks out Duran. Duran beats Barkley. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, like but I say, the Sugar Ray Leonard one, I think, and the, and, the, and the Hagler one, those are the ones that that mainly, you know, are, are questionable. Go ahead, uh, go. If I'm if I'm 1996 Michael Jordan and I play against the Knicks or Carl Malone, the Utah Jazz, and I beat him, then there's your answer right there. What was the point of us watching Mayweather Pacquiao if no matter what he did, because Pacquiao started at a lesser division and has moved up? eight divisions, so three more divisions than Mayweather, he's going to get the, the title of best of this era. Yeah. Why do we need to even see Mayweather versus Pacquiao if it was a foregone conclusion that Pacquiao is always going to be greater because he moved up eight divisions before he even fought Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Well, so we already knew that. Well, that's why I so think I, I don't I, Yeah, and, 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 and yeah, another yeah, thing, yeah. I want to... I want to say another thing. You know, who he beat at 154? Margarito, who got knocked out by Mosley yeah. prior and to he, that. Hey, hey, correction, and, AK, correction. He fought him at a catchweight at 154. 154. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and Margarito, exactly. And Margarito hasn't even been top at, 10. Floyd been at 154 to fight who? Cotto at the full 154. And Canelo. And De La Hoya. Yeah. 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 And Canelo at a catchweight of higher than 150. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. He's pound for pound higher than that. Uh, yeah, and my point is, yeah, my point is, he didn't fight a champion at 154. Margarito wasn't even on the top ten at that point. They just basically gave him coming off the uh, knockout loss. Uh, knock yeah, knockout loss to Mosley and a knockout uh, to Mosley. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. then like if you compare it to Floyd Mayweather moving up in weight, Floyd Mayweather fought the best at every weight. 
He fought the best at 130. He fought the best at 135, the best at 140, the best at 147, the best at 154. And the other hand, Manny Pacquiao, who he fought at 135? Like I said, who well, no, he fought no, at Yeah, at 35 for Manny was like 40 for Floyd. It was a pit stop. They grabbed the green belt, and they went on to bigger and better things. No, uh, well, for yes. 140 for Floyd, he fought uh, uh, Ricky Hatton. No, no, he fought, Hatton. He fought Hatton at 47. Hatton was still yeah, the undisputed I, champ at 140. Yeah, well, I know that. Let's go beat the man at 140. Is, I go, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think, yeah. And we, and we looking at overall. We, we looking at overall accomplishments because the thing is with Floyd Mayweather, he fought a lot of these guys coming off of their biggest win, not just a good win. He fought a lot of them coming off their biggest win. And by way of contrast, Manny Pacquiao, he fought a lot of these guys coming off of their biggest losses you right. know so so i mean it's it's you know it's the end of the spectrum it's the opposite of the spectrum basically you know so i mean if you just look at it that way my whole thing is both guys were hall of famers before they ever oh, got no. to welterweight oh yeah no yeah. doubt about it oh there's a lot of and, and, oh, there's a lot of hall of famers and, and, no doubt and, and, and many pack out drained them go go ahead ego yeah <laughs> yeah okay all i'm gonna say is this Koto? pacquiao is a great fighter he's, i no think he's about about he deserve hall of fame He's done stuff that other people haven't done in the eight divisions. That's great. But when you want to rank him higher than Floyd, look at Floyd. He, he's fought fresh competition. How many rematches has Pacquiao had? Four Marquez fights. He has three Bradley fights. These are known styles that he is competitive with. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like he, th these are just blowouts. These are all competitive fights. Yeah, but right? I think most and of us have... I think most of us have Floyd ahead right, of Manny. Hold on, hold on. I, gotta, I just want to... Got you. Yeah. I just wanted to finish my point. Go, sorry, I'm Mark. responding to Max Kellerman. Yeah, Max Kellerman. That's what I'm about to say. We're people, responding to Max oh, Kellerman. Right, got you, yeah. Got you. yeah, this is just this is just a Kellerman. Mm -hmm. He he rematched Morales three times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He has a lot of rematches on his re resume. Floyd off the couch off a 21 month layoff dominated Marquez. And you could say, oh, he came in overweight. There's nobody on this planet that I've seen face Marquez in all of his wins or losses, like Bradley, Chris, John, that dominated him 12 rounds out of 12 rounds. And he did that off of almost two years of inactivity. Every time Pacquiao has fought Marquez, what has it been, right? Mm -hmm. It's been competitive. You know what I'm saying? And you could say that, oh, the Cotto fight was tougher for Floyd than it was for Pacquiao, but he also fought Cotto at 154. And I believe if Cotto fought Pacquiao at the full 154, it might have been – Pacquiao still could have won because he was a, a phenom at that point. Tougher but I don't think it would have been as one-sided at the full 154. Mm -hmm. Instead of 145 or whatever they fought at, yeah. so pound for pound, that's what we're talking about, and that's what I'm rebuttaling to Max. Yeah, and and and, and another thing I want to make clear is, you know, the reason why we really want to touch on this, not just because of Max Kellerman, but because who Max Kellerman represents. He represents HBO. You know what I mean? So it's like if if you were suing Max Kellerman, you would be suing HBO. You see what I'm saying? So the the, the point is, he has to be held accountable. I think it's a ridiculous thing to say. You know, I think it's a ridiculous thing to say. There's a difference from statistics and opinion. And if we're breaking this down statistically, it's not even close. Manny Pacquiao is one of the best fighters ever. You know what I mean? I don't know exactly where he's rated, but he's accomplished a whole lot, right? There's a lot of fighters that have accomplished a lot. But yet, if we're comparing them to each other, you know, it, it shouldn't even be a discussion where I'm not sure if I put Manny Pacquiao in front of, you know, in front of Floyd Mayweather. Once again, that's why they call it the fight, the fight of the decade. You know what I mean? Because this fight was going to determine who the best of this generation was. Before they fought against each other, there was a lot of fans that have, that have turned hypocrites that were basically saying that Floyd Mayweather had to fight Manny Pacquiao for his legacy. If Floyd didn't fight Manny Pacquiao, he can't call himself TBE, he can't call himself this, and he can't call himself that. Then once Floyd Mayweather beats Manny Pacquiao, then it's a slap in the face, and quite frankly, it's extremely offensive. It's offensive to the sport, and, you know, it, it's just offensive to Floyd Mayweather in general. You know what I mean? The fact that you will sit over here and ask for this fight, and then once you get what you ask for, then you still don't give him the award. You know what I mean? Speaking and of then the very, and then the very next fight, they praise him for looking sharp. Yeah, they just yeah. Said he was damaged good. You see how it works? Like Miguel Cotto, Floyd fought him, beat him in a competitive fight. He bloodied Floyd's nose. Competitive fight, but Floyd clearly won. Cotto was damaged good. Mm -hmm. Then he loses to Austin Trout, resurrects his career with Freddie Roach, and they say, "Oh, he's back. He's knocking out Devin Rodriguez and Sergio Martinez." And then years later, he was damaged good in 2012. <clears throat> But he's in a mega fight 
where people were picking Cotto to beat Canelo like three years later, four years later. Mm -hmm. But all these people are damaged goods to discredit Floyd. That's what they're trying to do. Pacquiao was damaged goods because he only landed 71 punches. Mm -hmm. But now he's sharp, and he's, he's, he's the best he's looked in years. Yeah. And, and, and once again, this is all about just giving all fighters the credit they deserve. That's, that's all we're doing right now. You know, all fighters should be given the credit when they win. You know, if, if Manny Pacquiao would have beat Floyd Mayweather, there is no way I would be arguing about any of this. You know what I mean? If he beat Floyd Mayweather, he beat Floyd Mayweather because he was better than Floyd Mayweather. And that's just all that's to it. And, and the same thing applies for Floyd Mayweather. You know what I mean? He beat him. That was the Super Bowl of boxing when they fought against each other. Floyd won the Super Bowl. You know, so, um, yeah, so let, let's go. Before we run out of time, let's talk briefly about this um, top 25 uh, that ESPN put together. And you know what? Um, this whole thing with Max Kellerman, HBO's Max Kellerman and ESPN, you know, this is the reason why I asked the question, should some of these people even be talking about boxing? Oh. You know what I mean? I really, I really, come on, man. I, I, I think Max, I, I think Max knows what he's talking well, about. Well, but see, that's the whole thing, though, Sean. Max is very, very, you know what I'm saying, intelligent when it comes to talking boxing. He he's going to be pro HBO sometimes. Though. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Max Kellerman. But, but HBO, to your credit, gave a lot of credit to Floyd uh, during the commentary. Uh, Jim Lampley said, if you're Floyd, how good do you feel that you dominated this guy? Yeah. So, you know, but, props to them for that. But when but, you but when you but say. Then, so, then he spits in his face by saying yeah. Pacquiao still thumps him. Yeah. That what? <laughs> that, he spits. Say it again. What did Jim say? Say it again. You give him props, but then he spits in his face. Like, not hyper, literally, not literally. He puts in his face by discrediting him, saying that even though you did that, even though we just told the world that you dominated him, you're still not the best of this era. Oh, that was Max, though. Jim, so it doesn't make sense. Jim, Jim was the one that said the comment about how good uh, <laughs> Floyd looked in the fight. Yeah, both. Uh, well, like I said, like I said, both of them. Yeah, that, I mean, I don't even. They, 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 they keep bringing up the boring fight, the most boring fight, blah, 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 trying to they take didn't, credit they didn't away from Floyd. And it's a Pacquiao fight, too, though, because Pacquiao oh, yeah. is the one who should be the aggressor. Well, you know? He was supposed to be Joe Frazier. Ali showed up that night. I, Frazier didn't do what he was supposed to do. Well, I mean, I, I don't even, I, and I exactly. think, I don't, honestly, I don't even really look at Jim Lampley as a person who talks boxing. You know what I mean? He, he's more of a blow-by-blow blow guy. Yeah, he's yeah. more of a blow-by-blow blow and, and, and extremely... You know, leaning towards his favorite fighter. Yeah, you know, he blow he, by blow. Yeah, <laughs> he's 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 fan, he's fan <laughs> blow by blow. You know, very very fan friendly to the to the fighters that he actually likes. So I don't look at him as a, a a person who really knows boxing like that. I mean, I think he knows boxing, but he just chooses to be yeah. you know extremely you know biased and untrustworthy when it comes to talking boxing. Max Kellerman, on the right. other hand, he used to be the reason the voice, you know, I mean, or, or the voice of reason, excuse me, you know, going all the way back to ESPN, you know what I mean, he was that one guy, you know, he, you could tell he was like that dude that just, you know, came from the internet or wherever and was talking to these old casual type of fans, you know, that, that, that stick to these talking points, and he'd be like, wait a minute, that doesn't even make sense. He was on fire. Let me, let me, let me break this down logically. Yeah. That's the person that Max used to be. He was on fire. Back then. Yeah. yeah, but you know he, yeah. he's become compromised almost. You know what I mean? Because yeah. because yeah. now yeah. with him being with HBO and you know it's 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 the Walking Dead. You know he's been bit. When he, <laughs> when he wants to be though. When he wants to be. Yeah, yeah. And, and what about that ESPN list, Dante? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, hold on, let, let's let's jump to that before we run out of time. And, and remember, we got to try to squeeze in Errol Spence because that's the fight this weekend. Oh, top top, yeah. top 25, man. So so um, ESPN, they have this top 25 list. And once again, Boxing Ego, he made a video about this. Go ahead and check it out. But they have Floyd Mayweather at number one. They have Manny Pacquiao at number two. Now, um, there's a lot of people complaining about this list, and mainly because they have Gennady Golovkin and Roman Gonzalez in the top 25 already, and they have them over people like uh, Winky Wright, like uh, Miguel Cotto, and I mean, Boxing Ego, I mean, how do you explain that? I mean, let's let's play ESPN's I advocate. I didn't write that. I would never <laughs> come out with no... You know I you told them to write that. Come on, Ego. No. <laughs> nah, oh, I would never man. respect my boxing heritage <laughs> or something like that. First of all, you shouldn't have active fighters on a pound for pound all time twenty five list. It just shouldn't matter because hypothetically, no. And this is not 
I'm not trying. I'm not wishing this on. But Golovkin has a fight coming up. Chocolatito has a fight coming up. What if one of them got knocked out in their fight? And you just That's, put them on a list above Miguel Cotto. And we, we haven't seen them deal with adversity. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? And the same, same thing is, there's people that say, oh, you're biased in this. I told people, I like Earl Spence. I think he has a lot of potential. I would never put him on a, a top 25 list at this point of his career. You know I wouldn't I mean? put I wouldn't put Terrence Crawford and you know I'm I'm all American oh. and 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 I like Terrence Crawford I, but I would never put him on the top twenty five list right now you know what I mean because yeah, ever, we have to because see we have to, we have to see, see how good he is we, you know I mean we know how was, we have to see I him. it was that Judah advertised that mm-hmm. Judah was supposed to be the guy that would never lose yeah, you know what I mean yeah. and then he took some losses so you you really don't know in this boxing game Audley Harrison Olympic gold medalist they're like this is the heavyweight to beat. And he's getting, he got destroyed by everyone he fought, basically, Broner. including Wilder. So you never know what happens in this boxing game. So it's way too premature. Guys like Chocolatito, I put people on Chocolatito. I love the skill set. He has offense and defense, and he's, he's showing out. He's a young fighter. And he was trained by Arguello. He's a great fighter. But his HBO debut was like two fights ago. How is he on the list? People mm-hmm. didn't, HBO didn't even pick up his previous fights because they probably didn't even know who he was at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now he's getting the co-sign with Triple G and he's, he's making all-time greats list. Just call it what it is and, and be real. And, and, and I just I don't see him. how guys like the Lovkin can be there for that at this point. And, Sean, what, 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 what is your take on that? Um, do you believe that, that Golovkin and Roman should crack the top 25 greatest fighters in the last 25 years right now? Well, I, I, was that Ego that just was talking? Yeah, that was Ego. Yeah, Ego was right. Um, you know, uh, unless you really are one of, uh, and credit to you, if you're really one of those die, die, die hard fans, and you got to see the guy fight up until his HBO debut, which I know there's guys out there, but for most of us, how can we say he's that good when we're just getting to see him? That being said, unlike Golovkin, he's already done it in I think three divisions: 44 and 0, 38 knockouts against world champs already. He's already done uh, one titles in a couple of divisions. So so Golovkin? far, no, no, no. Uh, oh, Godala's Roman, you mean Roman? Yeah, yeah. Roman. Okay. So uh, so far, it would look, it would seem he's accomplished more than Golovkin. Oh, uh, well, yeah, no, yeah. no doubt about but, it. Yeah, he, yeah, he accomplished more than Golovkin, but top but 25 now, greatest Golovkin. fighters. You know, in the last twenty five years. In the last twenty five years, I mean, he didn't. They he, got I, him ahead of Cotto. How disrespectful! Yeah, yeah. Can't, no, you can't yeah. put him ahead of Cotto. And, and Winky yet, Wright, Winky Wright beat Shane Mosley twice. You Trinidad, know, he should have yeah. had a win over. I Taylor. He beat Trinidad. Yeah, I mean. And, you know, like I said, Miguel Cotto, Sergio Martinez, uh, Judah. I mean, the, the list just goes on and on and on. I mean, Michael and, Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, it's, it's, what you said, Michael Moore? Yeah, was did he make the list? Because I mean, that's a guy who was light heavyweight champion and the first southpaw heavyweight champion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're just saying yeah, other yeah, names yeah. that should be on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. But, well, there's a lot. of, I mean, how could you put Triple G ahead of Michael Dante, Moore? Why not? Yeah, yeah. So right now, Dante. You know. well, they don't. They don't have more. Who's accomplished more? Triple G, Triple G, Chocolatito, or Guillermo Rigondeaux? Who's accomplished more in their? Early careers as a pro. Guillermo Rigondeaux, he beat pound for pound the best, right. um, you know, Nonito Donaire. Definitely. And, with only 13 yeah, fights. He, and he Donaire was considered pound for pound number three for like the last couple of years. For a while they had Floyd Mayweather, Donaire. Andre Ward, and Guillermo Rigo. And Donaire, Donaire had lost in yeah. 11 years. Donaire hadn't lost in 11 years, was bigger, stronger, fast, just like Rigondeaux, and he defeated him. That was on people's pound for pound list. Why is he not on the ESPN list? If you want to add active fighters, yeah, mm-hmm. he's definitely ahead of Triple G. If uh, Rigondeaux is, yeah, 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 and, and 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 like I said, man, this is my whole thing, and this is what the new media is all about. I, I really, Sean, and I know you're not going to agree with me on this, but I really question if certain people, you know, should have this type of, you know, position. When it comes to talking boxing, I'm with you, sir. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah. like Max. Yeah, exactly. I just like Max. I, so. I, I believe, like I said, we need more people that's a lot more rational, you know, because just throwing, just randomly throwing Roman Gonzalez and and Golovkin, and this is not a hidden dig or or any type of dig at Roman Gonzalez and Golovkin. It's just extremely premature. No, and once again, like Ego said, put put Roman Gonzalez <laughs> over people like Miguel Cotto. They, this is who they have him over. They have him over Miguel Cotto, Nassim Hamed, and Winky Wright, and Terry Norris. They have Roman Gonzalez over all of these guys. You can't put him over Norris. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, if they, and if ESPN, if they were smart about it, their, their approach, if they said honorable mention and they just said these are some bonus people who are not beating legends right. at this point because they just have the feeling to they have the capacity to be these great things, right. I wouldn't have like an honorable mention. I would have no problem with it because they do have those potentials to be great and all time great. 
I do see that. Yeah. But they have to prove it. I've seen a lot of fighters that I thought had the potential. You know what I mean? Yeah. Antoine Douglas was a, a pro- now I'm not saying me, I was vouching for him, but a lot of people were vouching for him, Amir Mom, and then they, they end up getting stopped and, and losing. So you, the boxing is fickle. You never really know. So we got to let these fighters' careers end before we anoint them or at least have them fight, a, you know what I mean, wars, golf watches, people like that to know what they're capable of. Yeah, and at, and at the end of the day, you know, you basically lose a, a lot of credibility when you pull stuff like this, and and, and I'm I'm saying that that goes for Max Kellerman too. Yeah, I, I, I once again, you know, until he became infected with with HBO, you know, he was a a, a person who spoke a lot of truth. I mean, you know, I know once he you know went over to HBO, you know, they conformed him a little bit, and it, it looked like he was trying to cater to for, at first Larry Merchant, now Jim Lampley. But, you know, people read straight through this, and it's like you can't take people serious anymore, and, and that's the bottom line. You know, like, like AK, like you were telling me earlier, AK, right, you, you said that, yeah, you know, if you're talking to random people on the street, or, or even internet fans who just say stupid stuff, you know, oh, you know, this guy's a runner, a coward, now, you don't, you don't even take people like that serious because, right. you know, you look at them as someone who doesn't know boxing. But when you see somebody, you know, with the platform that Max Kellerman has, you know, it's like, really? You would say something like that? You know, and it's, you, you kind of lose a little bit of respect for their knowledge of the sport, you know, quite frankly. And that's so, yeah. the reason. The reason I have the biggest problem with it is because I grew up passionate about this sport of boxing. And yeah. you want the big entities to, to talk what's real in boxing because they're – there's a lot of impressionable, impressionable people that don't know boxing, so they're going to turn to with ESPN like, "Oh, Chocolate Tito's better than Cotto," and they're going to run with that <laughs> logic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they're just learning about the sport. Yeah, absolutely. So you don't want to brainwash people. That's why, and that's why they throw the red meat out there. We got to hold these cats accountable, and that's what we're doing right now. You know, it's it's all and about logic crazy, and statistics over opinions. You know, and and, and that's just and what the crazy it is. Thing is I, the crazy thing is, if you ask Chocolate Tito, he follows me on Instagram. I might ask him. If you ask him if he feels he's accomplished more than Cotto, he'll probably say, no, I haven't. Cotto's a legend. Mm, so yeah. it's not even about the fighters. Yeah. Not, nothing against uh, Pacquiao or Triple G or Chocolatito. These fighters probably would acknowledge, like, hey, I haven't done more than Wiki Wright. I haven't done more than Dale Hoy or whoever mm-hmm. else they're in front of. And real, and real quick, man, let's go ahead and get our predictions real quick. Um, Errol Spence versus um, Chris Algieri. I want to get predictions. Do you guys think it's going to be a knockout? If you do, what round? Uh, let's start with you, Sean. Ooh, me on the spot first. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely taking Errol Spence. Uh, maybe if he stops him, it's late. Yeah, uh, late stoppage. Late stoppage, I guess. Yeah. No, I say Algeri. I say Algeri takes him twelve. Errol Spence wins the decision. Okay. Uh, Ak. Um, I got Algeri by knockout, man. <laughs> Algeri oh, by right. knockout. Uh oh. Uh oh. He by. I got um. Er- <laughs> 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 man down. <laughs> No, uh, feel like an eighth round knockout, probably. You know, late, late knockout. I feel like uh, Errol Spence is going to stop him to the body. He's going to cut off the ring and, you know, beat him up to the ropes to, on the ropes and, you know, stop him. Okay, and boxing ego. Yeah, I'm pretty much in unison with the guys. I think uh, corner stoppers, TKO. I don't know. I don't think he'll knock him out cold. Uh, uh, Chris Algier, he's durable, so I really want to say uh, he'll go the distance. But I think it's Earl's time right now. He's younger, fresher. He's going to beat up that body. And then probably force the TKO stop it late in the fight. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen enough type of deal, and that's impressive because Ruslan, Pacquiao, Khan, none of those guys stopped Algeria. Yeah, and, and it would be extremely, extremely impressive if if Errol Spence, if he could do something that Manny Pacquiao, Amir Khan couldn't do, and stop Chris Algeria. Oh yeah. You know, I, I really the, statement. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really like both of these cats. Um, you know, shouts out to my man Chris Algieri. I covered his camp exclusively, you know what I mean? Followed him everywhere, you know. Great so, guy. yeah, he's a real cool cat, you know. But I, and, and don't take this personal, Chris, but I, I would have to slightly lean towards, um, you know, Errol Spence on this one. Um, I think that Errol Spence, um, he has a really, really bright future. And once again, you know, if he can knock out um, Chris Algieri, that would be a hell of a statement. So um, I, I, I look forward to a really good fight this weekend, you know. So we'll, we'll talk more about it and do a review on it next week. We're going to talk more about this um, top 25 list perhaps next week because there's a lot of discrepancies on this list, you know. Just keep the boxing talk fresh, you know. So um, we done talked and um, the music done went out. So that's pretty much a wrap. 
So let me go ahead and uh, once again, thanks my man in the studio for um, stopping by. My man Sean from The Boxing Voice. Check out that channel, The Boxing Voice. Some more good um, boxing content over there. Thanks a lot, brother. Thank you so much. All right, man. And you already know my man Boxing Ego, my man AK. Check out his channel, AK Arab King, and my man Boxing Ego's channel. You already know Dante's Boxing Nation. We'll see you guys next week. It's the nation, baby. Have a good one, fellas. Yeah.